Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind? A false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain. I see thee yet. In form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshaldst me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made to fall, so are the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood which was not so before. It is the bloody business which informs us to mine eyes. Now over the one half world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf who howls his watch. Thus, with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm, said Earth, hear not my steps which way they walk, for fear thy very stones praise of my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I thread, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds to cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons these a heaven or to hell. In the beginning of the soliloquy, Macbeth uses the imperative come. It suggests that he believes he is in control of the situation at hand. It also has connotations with Lady Macbeth convincing him to kill Duncan in the previous act. It is no longer of Lady Macbeth's doing, even though she did start it off in the first place, at this current point anyway. At the start of the soliloquy, Macbeth is not fully sure of what he will do. This is shown through Shakespeare's use of repeating questioning language. As the, as the speech continues, Macbeth is no longer questioning anything, showing that he is resolved on the situation. However, this section of the soliloquy signals to the audience that Macbeth is already starting to lose his mind. The hallucination shows that his mental state is far from what it should be. The phrase, a dagger of the mind, is effective imagery and reinforces the idea that he is in control, as he is questioning the vision. It conveys to the audience that he is still in a sensible state of mind, especially since later in the play, himself and Lady Macbeth believe what they see when they are riddled with guilt and despair. This line is very vivid imagery. It also foreshadows Macbeth murdering Duncan. This is the start of the idea that the act is merely fate. The alliteration of bloody business creates a harsh tone and emphasises the severity of what Macbeth is going to do, regicide. These lines imply that the idea of going against nature, killing Duncan, means that Macbeth cannot sleep. It hints at the guilt that Macbeth is already feeling and foreshadows his inability to sleep later on in the play. There are many references to the supernatural. Witchcraft and ghosts have heavy connotations with evil. 
it reminds the audience that what Macbeth is planning is immoral. The multiple references also suggest that the witches are on his mind, specifically the prophecy of him being a king. Murder being alarmed is personification of murder. It conveys that the dark side of Macbeth is being summoned so that he has the strength to kill Duncan. A wolf is a very predatory creature. It is a violent killer, which is what Macbeth is about to be too. Shakespeare mentions Tarquin in the sense that Macbeth will be like him. Tarquin's son, Tarquinius, defied a righteous matron, Lucretia. The comparison between the two is evident, as like Tarquinius, Macbeth is about to attack a moral, innocent person. The bluntness of the phrase, I go and it is done, shows that Macbeth is back in control. However, the referral of the murder of Duncan as it subtly suggests that Macbeth does not want to admit to the act. Ultimately, it portrays Macbeth as still slightly conflicting, but pro-regicide. The repetition of rhyme, both in line and couplets, refer back to the way the witches speak, often in rhyming couplets to mimic chanting of spells. On the page, the positioning of the three-word rhyme, bell, knell, hell, looks like a staircase. This could suggest the descent to hell for Macbeth, and most likely opposingly, Duncan to heaven. This rhyme is three words. Similarly, the final section of the soliloquy is three lines. In the play, there are three witches and three prophecies too. In itself, the witches and prophecies have links to fate. Three also has heavy connotations to evil in the 1600s. Overall, the links to the supernatural remind the audience of the immoral actions Macbeth is about to take.